tell us, write to us and tell us why. Yes, I'll write okay. to you um, either way. Thank you. Hildegard Gordon. Thank you. Um, so earlier this year, we held a referendum on abortion in Ireland, and both Facebook and Google stopped all advertising in relation to that mm. referendum. And that action was very much welcomed by the Irish government at the time. And so my question is, is that action not an admission by your platform that it is used for fake news, to decimate fake news, and to influence um, elections? So, so that was a, a very specific response. And again, I was um, part of the decision-making process. And I'm glad that the ultimate decision, uh, uh, that you welcome that. Um, what we saw was that there's a very good non-governmental organisation, the Transparency Project, yeah. Transparency Referendum Initiative in Ireland, who were flagging to us sort of clear evidence that there were significant amounts of money being spent by organisations on both sides of that debate from people outside of Ireland. We then needed to make a decision. Uh, Irish law, as I understand it, is silent on the matter. It says that foreigners must not fund Irish political parties it doesn't say anything about them spending their own money projecting stuff in. I assume reasonably, because when the law was written, there was no, you know, it was local TV and radio, it was all controllable and our systems didn't exist. Uh, um, because of that silence, we needed to interpret what we thought the intent or spirit of Irish law was, and we took the decision that uh, projecting material in from outside Ireland was something we would not allow. We're now very into the debate. I, I think um, C76, the new law proposal in Canada, I think has this explicit uh, provision on preventing outside interference. And I think you have uh, also legislation in front of you. I, I mean, so that's the rationale for the decision. We tried to understand what the spirit of Irish law was. Having to make a pretty binary decision, yes, no, we're not comfortable. We would much rather, you know, that there is a legal framework that we can stick to where you've made those decisions. But so we were, the, the, the threat was there, and that's why I suppose, and I know you can't yeah. speak for Google, but it was Google and Facebook who made that decision um, during our, that election, that referendum campaign, to stop all advertising. Yeah. So would it be fair to say that there was a threat that there would be fake news decimated uh, through your platform and there would be interference in the electoral uh, process? And again, to tease out, this, for us this was not a fake news question, so more it was just a straightforward a political potential, campaign. There was, there was it, potential it, for that. It, it was election interfer or yes, election interference. interference. As in somebody and that's was why the ads money. were. Yeah. That's yeah. Why the ads but, but a lot of the ads were vote yes, vote no. They were not fake news as such. They were just straightforward, you know, political. Yeah, but the concern was view. that there was political interference. Yeah, yeah that's fine. And, and as I say, the Irish government very much welcomed that. Um, you made reference there to legislation. We have two private members' bills yes. going Lawless. through the Irish Parliament um, at the moment, and both Facebook and Google have come before our committee. Um, our communications committee in the Oireachtas in Ireland and engage constructively with our committee in relation to that. One is the um, a private member's bill in relation to a digital safety commissioner bill, yep. which would provide a takedown power to a regulator. Uh, the second bill that we're looking at is online advertising social media transparency bill 2017, which would ensure that when you're viewing an ad that you would know who is paying for it. So in light of hmm. fake news and the data breaches, uh, that your company has been involved in over the last uh, two years, do you accept that Facebook needs to be regulated? Uh, um, so, yes. Through legislation like this? Yes, and, and I, I, I mean, we very much welcome the updating of election law. Again, it's not to be critical that many of the laws governing political communication were drafted pre-internet. Uh, they, they have things like, you know, bans or restrictions on certain forms of campaigning but they're behind the times. We've seen some very interesting developments. Uh, Brazil, for example, I understand that the responsibility is put on the political actor, uh, that they can only use a service if it has the transparency tools, and if they uh, don't do that, then the political actor is in trouble. Canada, I understand, is doing something similar around disclaimers, but also putting responsibility on the platform. T to the extent that, again, you set the rules for your elections, it's not us, but to the extent that this is all clarified, and we have a simple playbook to work to, that would be extraordinarily helpful. Yeah. And I suppose, and thank you for that, so the, the, the root of this is, and this is our, our concern, is that there is a lack of regulation of social media right across the board, and it's not just Facebook, yeah. just to put that on the record. Um, uh, we have our, our, our colleagues not here today, but uh, Australia have a, their own digital safety commissioner, and my understanding is that um, process is working very well because of the engagement with social media platforms and 
I, I think I'm correct in saying that the um, Digital Safety Commissioner in Australia has not needed to actually fine social Sorry. media platforms because of the engagement <coughs> process. And I think for people listening and watching and citizens across the world who we all represent want to hear I suppose, Facebook's view mm. in relation to regulation. Are you serious about regulation on a global level because we're all here representing international um, countries right across the globe and that we need to regulate on a global level yeah. and what is your view on that? Uh, absolutely so again to be very clear um, my view is that the best outcome that we get for people uh, our users your constituents they're the, they're the same people the best outcome that we get is where we are working together on this uh, I have now tens of thousands of colleagues who are um, deeply committed to trying to protect the safety of our users again I, you know these are people who get up every morning and worry about what's happening on the platform and try and prevent harm. And it's, it's now tens of thousands. It used to be too few, and we accept that. Um, the best way that we can ensure safety is where we're able to be very open with government about the problems we're seeing and have a very informed debate uh, and where we can work together on what the solutions are. Some of the solutions are on our platform. We can throw people off. Uh, we can collect information. There are certain things we can do. Some of them absolutely need regulation. If somebody is a threat to children, us throwing them off Facebook is not enough. They'll go somewhere else. And we need them to work with the authorities to prosecute them. So we're, uh, the UK government uh, has, a, I think, an intended white paper in, uh, next year that we'll work with them on. As you said, we're working with you and with other governments. That's the team I, I, I run sort of does a lot of this work. Uh, we've recently announced we're going to work with the French government, um, again, and bring regulators in and try and develop new regulatory models. Where, as I say, ideally, we get experts in area like child safety, areas like child safety, we get experts in technology like us, and we get experts in the law and people who represent the users uh, from the political world working together. That's where we think we'll get the best outcomes. I think anywhere you have human, it's human nature where there is no regulation, no oversight, no watchdog, be it in a business, an organisation, you need to have that oversight. Would you agree in the case of Facebook and other social media platforms that you also need that regulation on a global level? Absolutely, and that's our expectation, that yeah. we should be accountable for you. We should tell you what we've done. And if you're unhappy, you should have the power to take sanctions against us. I, I completely accept that principle. Yeah. We have a, a agreed here to maybe look at consulting how we would set out a set of rules on an international level, be it through the United Nations um, or at an OECD level. And I think that would be very positive. And I hope that we could continue this work, Chair. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you both, um, both Canada and the UK, for coming together to co-chair this meeting. And I think this is the start of a very important process that I think we can all work together to ensure that we there's momentum now that we regulate social media and work together on that.